Robert Bundy. Bundy once lived in both Seattle and Tacoma. He's charged in Salt Lake City with aggravated kidnap and attempted murder. King News Service has learned that Seattle police are sending a detective to Salt Lake City tonight. Robin, what's the latest on the story? Well, Steve, at the moment, there is no known connection between Ted Bundy and the women found murdered in Washington. But police are bearing down again in their investigation into the Ted murder cases in Washington state. And they say they have a renewed interest in Ted Bundy. Theodore Robert Bundy was a young man King County police once looked at as a possible suspect in connection with the Ted murders in Washington. A 1972 graduate, graduate of the University of Washington and a second year law student at the time of his arrest in Salt Lake City. At a press conference this morning, Seattle Police Chief Robert Hansen announced a special task force being formed to study Ted Bundy. That is the wrong film, but we should have it up in, in just a little bit. Ted Bundy was first brought to the attention of the King County Police by a phone call from a citizen, and he became one of nearly 3,000 Ted suspects in the area. Our source in Salt Lake City says it was Ted Bundy's brown Volkswagen that led to his arrest in Utah, a brown Volkswagen similar to one witnesses recall seeing at Lake Sammamish State Park on July 14, 1974. That was the day that Janice Ott and Denise Naslin disappeared. There's another person who remembers Ted Bundy driving a Volkswagen. That is his landlady in Seattle. Bundy lived in, in a house in the University District for several years until August 1974, when he left for Utah to attend law school. Bundy's upstairs apartment was at 4143 12th Northeast, and that's several blocks from Linda Ann Healy's basement apartment. She was last seen alive in January 1974. In 1972, Ted Bundy joined Governor Evans' re-election campaign staff. His job was to follow former Governor Albert Rosalini to public meetings and to news conferences, and he was to report back what was said. And on August 29, 1974, Ted Bundy talked to King News Service disclaiming any political dirty tricks. As I said, we will have that film shortly. The one thing that nearly everyone agrees on, whoever knew Ted Bundy, is that the whole thing must be a mistake. They say they are shocked and they hope that the police have the wrong man. Interest in Ted Bundy has also been stirred up in Colorado. The police authorities there, who also have cases of murdered and missing women, have made inquiries about Ted Bundy with Utah police. Robin, can you tell us what Seattle Police Chief Robert Hansen and County Chief Larry Walt are saying uh, about Ted Bundy tonight? Well. Uh, Chief Robert Hansen today said that he would be putting two men, two detectives, on uh, the case of the two women in Seattle. That's George Ann Hawkins and Linda Ann Healy to see if uh, there were any connection to this, to Ted Bundy. And uh, Lawrence Walt said that now that this whole thing is, has happened in Utah, there is definitely a renewed interest in this one suspect. And we should point out again to wrap it up, Ted Bundy is not a suspect, at least according to Seattle police. He is a suspect, but one of many, mm -hmm. according to King one County. One of 3,000. Okay. Yes. Thank you, Robin. The man most of us know as Ted has been seen only in a picture. It's a composite drawing that police created from eyewitness accounts. But police say Ted is a real man and they have spent the last 15 months trying to track him down. Paul Boyd takes a look at the history of this case. King County Police launched their investigation after Denise Naslin and Janice Ott vanished from Lake Sammamish State Park in July 1974. At least seven people at the crowded beach saw and heard a man who called himself Ted. He was described as a smooth-talking man with his arm in a cast who asked several women to help him load a boat onto a Volkswagen. A massive search was launched for Ted, and police were flooded with calls from citizens who said they had seen the suspect. The first break in the case came with the discovery of the skeletal remains of six women in the mountains east of Seattle. With the bodies found all in one place, bodies of women who disappeared from places as far away as Corvallis in Seattle, police realized that one man was probably responsible for the deaths of at least eight women. A special 11-man task force was set up by King County to handle the case, and to date that group has investigated nearly 2,800 possible Ted suspects. King County authorities worked out a deal with the Department of Motor Vehicles that each time a suspect was named, 
police showed that man's driver's license picture to the Lake Sammamish witnesses. In that fashion, they eliminated thousands of potential suspects. But when it appeared this spring that the investigation had reached a dead end, police admitted that they would only catch Ted if he committed another crime and got caught. Detectives are now hard at work to determine if it was Theodore Bundy who made that mistake. This is Paul Boyd for King News Service. But through all the excitement of the Salt Lake City arrest, there's one man here in Seattle who's not at all excited. He is Captain Nick Mackey. He headed up the investigation of the local murders from the very beginning. News Service columnist Don McGaffin reports. Don? Jeannie, the reason Captain Nick Mackey says he's not excited is simple. He says Ted Bundy is not a prime suspect in the murder of the Seattle women. After announcing months ago that he'd hold no more news conferences until his investigators had something definite to announce, he had a news conference today to unannounce Bundy. Process of uh, investigation now, and we have been for some time. This is why one of the reasons I called this. Uh, <clears throat> I was said in the in some releases that we looked at him and were not interested. That's not true. Uh, another one said that we have done no follow-up since the uh, arrest in Salt Lake City. Uh, uh, this is not a true statement because we're not doing anything different. We've been on him. Uh, we've been investigating him as we have many others. I'd like to emphasize that because he is not the one suspect. Mackey says there is no prime suspect and the chief detective in the investigation now seems to be the county's computer, a computer with the nickname Ralphie. Ralphie has memorized nearly 2,800 names of suspects. It has memory banked more than 3,500 pieces of information. It cross-matches, re-references, but so far has produced no one worthy of the status prime suspect. And this electronic detective doesn't work for peanuts. The cost so far, more than $30,000 for computer runs. Mackey added that the pictures of Ted Bundy so far have produced no results when showed to the witnesses. And he said he has no plans to send any county detectives up to Salt Lake City.